Hi, it's Matt. Today we're looking at a detailed deconstruction of a SCSS 234-4, otherwise known as the Puma. And uh, yeah, I think it turned out pretty good, so I think I've earned the title of The Puma Man. The Puma Man. Uh, no, it's Puma Man. The Puma Man is my enemy. Dude, lighten up. And it's Puma. You cannot escape me, Puma Man. Okay, whatever, dude. Let's move to the studio and take a closer look. The neatest thing on this model is the working eight-wheel steering. And by the way, the real Puma did have eight-wheel steering, so it could have a pretty tight turning radius. The turret also rotates 360 degrees, and there's a little bit of elevation and depression for the cannon barrel. So let's get this unbuilding session started. Mats. Custom creations, Mats. Custom creations. Watch them unbuild, watch them unbuild, watch them unbuild. Lego for you. This is as much as I'm going to take it apart. But you can see the steering components a little bit better now that we're down to the bare chassis. And here's the secret. The spare tire acts as the knob to turn the wheels back and forth. One side of the rig has black wheels because I was originally going to make it an all black body. The other side has a different style of wheels. If this is the turret top, I'm showing a couple of different hatch styles. I don't really like the scale of this bigger one, but I don't like the height of the smaller one. And on a real Puma, the position is actually switched. Uh, there should be a hatch here and one slightly behind it on this side. The holes, I'm using a circular piece, and they're a little bit under scale. I wish I had an opening that was 3x3, three three, and maybe LEGO makes it, but I don't know. I've got a cylindrical piece underneath just to hold it in by gravity. That's what the underneath of that looks like. You can see the other two circular pieces. This is also held in just by gravity. That's the turret without the sides on it. This was really tricky. This prompted me to go to this scale because when I tried to work it at a smaller scale it was just uh, trying to get the angles was a little too difficult. From above the outline of the turret is a kind of a stretched hexagon with curved sides actually. So I had to improvise and kind of do the best I could. The gun itself is on a pintle. It has a little bit of elevation and depression. I put a sliding cone piece on to sort of hide the fact that there's a gap when the barrel goes up and down. That's the back of the turret. The cannon itself, it just has a rod inside. I actually put a little bit of scotch tape wrapped around this, this rod in order to keep this tight. And I could have done that to the end, but I didn't. It's just on there. There's the bottom of the turret ring. These are the sides of the turret. That's what the inside of one of the sides looks like. A key part of getting the, the angles to work is by having one of these ball and socket pieces that I could sort of angle and articulate the sides. This is one of the flanking pieces on the back of the Puma alongside the engine compartment. Here's the inside of it. So you can see these are just mirror images of each other. I kept the palette of camouflage to, I want to say four colors. Light gray, dark gray, brown, and tan, and green. Oh, that's five. A big reason for that was I didn't really have enough of these um, angled type pieces, these kind of mini wing pieces, 
in all in one color. I did start off by making it all black. This is the engine deck. And it actually has these little door pieces here to get access to the engine. That's what that looks like underneath. It's actually hinged to get the downward slope of the deck. Here's a piece of the side skirting. This is the other side. These two are mirror images. I'd like to talk a little bit about putting camouflage patterns using Lego. Now what I tried to do here is not have it just patchwork and spotty, but actually try to have sort of broad angular stripes across the body, which is how the Germans like to do it. You can see how the brown kind of crosses diagonally. I start with the gray, or maybe this is just the end of a point. The, this light gray comes across here, dark gray, and the tan comes across. The green color is a beautiful color, but it's in very short supply for me. I would have used more of it if I, if I had more. I basically used all my dark green parts. This is the uh, front fenders. And you can see these inner fender wells can actually pivot. So you can see how the front of the fender and the inner fender wall, how both are hinged and they snug up together. And there it is from head on. This is what the underneath side looks like. Now we're looking at the rear fender deck, actually upside down. This is how it looks like from the top view. Again, you can see a little bit of the patterning of the camouflage. I have a green, dark green coming across there, brown diagonally there, dark gray. You get the idea. And you can see there's a lot of intricate parts, sometimes just little single one by ones, and it gets kind of tricky. So to keep those all in place, you've got to kind of beef it up on the back. Here's like a desert tan that uh, I decided not to use because I didn't have enough of them, but uh, it could have been cool to make an Africa core version. And this whole back deck is actually pivots on these hinges. Here's something I didn't notice till I took it apart, but I have two different fenders, rear fenders on it. Where I have the hinges aren't aligned with each other. That's the fender type I meant to go with, with this sort of this wedge shape there. This thing on the rear deck is just to fill a gap between the back of the Puma and where the engine deck stops. That's the front deck where the driver sits. It's some kind of off-brand part right there that I use to make the driver's viewing port. This just sits via gravity. That's what the underneath side looks like. And you can see I have the front hinge. The real Puma has a more complex shape to the hood, if you will. And mine's a little bit more blunt, but it gets the idea across. That's the chin piece of the front of the Puma. And this is the uh, crash bar, nerf bar. I don't know what you want to call it. This funky thing is what goes in the driver's compartment. If Well, the driver sits in the middle, but if it was a car, this would be the driver's side. And this is the infill on the side of the hood, if you will. I had to do all kinds of funky stuff to have it pivot on various axes to get what I wanted. Speaking of which, that's the secret to getting these angled panels to some semblance of where they should be in space. And this was the single trickiest thing on this model is all of these angles. Lego really isn't designed to have all these complex angles. And so it makes it difficult. This is the piece that holds the turret on it. And on the corner of this, I've got, I've got these uh, 
ball and socket joints. And then I use various little circular one by ones. You can see how this is held on here and it can pivot. This is what that looks like underneath. So the turret ring. It fits like that. This is the top back of the engine deck. Underneath I'm using these aftermarket pieces to get the angle that I needed. I'm not sure where these, who makes these or where they came from, so you might have to improvise. Here's a look at the engine, which was a V12 diesel developed by Tatra, a Czech company. The diesel was chosen specifically for this application, and I don't think the Germans used the diesel for any other military vehicles. There's a view of the back end and from above. I have a turbocharger on there. I think the real one actually had two. And now we go to the rear driver's compartment. If you got in a jam, instead of backing up, the driver would actually move to a rear position and just drive out going that way. And here's the pedestal that is to the right of the driver's position and that is holding up the turret ring in the back. This is the firewall between the engine and this rear steering compartment. For the sides of the hull underneath, these pieces are actually some kind of aftermarket hinge piece. I'm not sure what the source is. I think they're made by Kobe. Hashtag sponsor me, please. But if you don't have those, there's other ways to, to hinge and articulate. But these are, you basically set them just how are they going to naturally fall inside the, inside the vehicle. You can see in the back I use the universal joint. I use the spare tire, which is actually a little undersized, so it wouldn't drag the ground. But I use the tire to hide the handle, the twisting knob, to make the eight-wheel steering work. Once again, I got a goofy piece underneath and I'm hiding it, but that's because I didn't have the adequate parts, but you know, use what you can and you can get away with hiding stuff like that. The suspension is actually a lot like the real vehicle and I use these sort of, uh, oops, and I use these triangular trailer hitch type pieces. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. This was quite a challenge, but it was a lot of fun to do. And I want to thank you for watching, subscribing, and sharing. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you won't miss another episode. Thanks a lot, y'all. Bye. We must find him. You are the Puma Man. No, I'm a madman, and I'll smash your head in if you take one more step.